Hello, and welcome to the Tavern Chatcast. Now, today, I'm going to talk about the AD&D 1E DMG, but I'm also going to be talking about the different basic rule sets because I want to point something out. So, if you look at the screen, and if, you look, if, if you're at home, just know I have the Holmes Basic cover right now, followed by... The Moldvay cover followed by the Metzner cover, and there's a reason for this. All right. So and then I'm going to go into the AD&D 1E DMG. Because my argument is the Dungeon Master's Guide is not a rule book, as we would think of it. The Dungeon Master's Guide is instead what it says. It's a guide. Now, what is a guide? A guide is... A person who advises or shows the way to others. Okay. I could say that. In my experience, as a, as a police officer and a, and a sergeant in my PD, we had a patrol guide. And the patrol guide was just that. It was to guide our actions, to give us instructions... But it wasn't necessarily a rule book. It was a rule book if the if the department wanted to hang you for not following it. But it couldn't cover every situation. So if you had a situation that wasn't covered by the patrol guide, you would generally do your best to improvise based upon that. It wasn't it wasn't a hard sell. Okay, or it wasn't a hard that's what I'm looking for here. It wasn't rigid. It was somewhat flexible. So, Dungeons and Dragons. All right, our first basic set, the home set. Rules for fantastic medieval role-playing adventure game campaigns. This book is based upon the original work published in 1974 and three supplementary booklets published in a two-year period after the initial release of Dungeons and Dragons. It is aimed solely at introducing the reader to the concepts of fantasy role-playing and the basic play of this game. To this end, it limits itself to basics. The rules contained rules contained herein allow only for the first three levels of player progression, and the instructions for the game referee, the dungeon master, are kept to the minimum necessary to allow him to conduct basic games. All right. So, <clears throat> from what they're saying there, you're getting rules, but the DM is getting instructions. They're getting a guide, all right? You get the rules for play, but you are getting a guide for the DM. Interesting. Let's move on to... Dun, dun, dun. Moldve. Fantasy adventure game. Basic rule book. All right. What do we have here? Oh, that's the index. Don't need that. Forward. Uh, I was busy rescuing the captured maiden when the dragon showed up. Fifty feet of scale terror glared down at us with the smoldering with smoldering red eyes. Tendrils of smoke drifted out from between fangs larger than dra daggers. The dragon blocked the only exit from the cave. Sometimes I forget that D and D fantasy adventure game. It's a game and not a novel I'm reading, or a movie I'm watching. The original D&D rules are a classic. They gave the first gaming system for fantasy role-playing, and in my opinion, are still the best set of rules on the market. When I revised the rules, I tried to maintain the spirit of the earlier rules. Those rules were written for people with a background of gaming experience. This revision was designed to be very easy to be easy to read and used by individuals who have never played a role-playing game. In a half dozen years since the original rules were published, the TSR staff has answered thousands of rules questions. The answers helped find problem areas in those rules, areas which could either stand minor improvements or were difficult for novice gamers to understand. Again, when I was working, that's why you had a patrol guide to guide your decisions, to guide your actions. You know, otherwise you'd be all over the place. This revision was aided not only by the collective gaming experience of TSR personnel, 
but by the gaming experience of the thousands of players and DMs who sent us letters in the mail. Okay. No rule is inviolate, particularly if a new or altered rule will encourage creativity and imagination. The important thing is to enjoy the adventure. In a sense, the D&D game has no rules, only rule suggestions. Guy, right? It's not rigid. It's not rigid. Let's move on to the Metzner edition of the basic Dungeon Master's rule book. Hmm. So the DM is being given a rule book. Okay. This book will show you how to run a Dungeons and Dragons game. It will not show you how to play the game. You may play a Dungeons and Dragons game either by yourself or with others. If you want to play alone, use the solo adventure in the player's manual. You get one shot, right? Because after you've played that solo, you really can't play it again. If you want to play a game with others, one person must first learn how to be the dungeon master, the person who runs the game, and the others will be the players. You must know how to be a player before learning how to be a dungeon master. For now, if you only wish to play and not run games, then do not read this booklet. This booklet contains information for the dungeon master. It, you will have less fun playing if you learn the information ahead of time. A big part of the game is the mystery and excitement that comes from not knowing all the answers. Later, when you are an experienced player, you may wish to look up some details or even become a dungeon master yourself. And when the time comes, everything you need is right here. If you have not yet read the player's manual, uh, you will probably not understand most of this booklet, but if you have played the solo adventure, finished reading the rest of the text, the rest of the player's manual, and want to become a dungeon master, then welcome. Now, by the way, it's also player's manual. Manual is a set of instructions. Perfect, right? But here, these are the rules, the rule book for the dungeon master. These aren't being given as a set of guidelines, but the dungeon Master's Guide. The DMG from 1A is specifically called a guide. Now, when you read that book, and holy shit, have I been delving into it. It is a hodgepodge of rules. Some of which, if they don't directly con conflict with each other, don't necessarily support each other. Why unarmed combat is this bizarre percentile system overbearing, pummeling, uh, why? Why? Well, when you consider that it's a guide, then you kind of understand why. Really, in the DMG, for the first edition game, what parts do you need to run the game? You need the two hit charts, you need the saving throws, right? Do you need the... Uh, the magic item charts? Not really. Right? I mean, it's good to see the descriptions, all that stuff. Maybe it's good for inspiration. You don't need it. Okay? <clears throat> it's not needed. It's nice to have. It will guide you when you assign magic items. Aerial combat. You could follow those rules to a T and, oh, well, uh, your flight rating is C, but they have an A, so they make sharp returns. Again, this isn't, what, fight in the skies? Really, how many gamers are going to go that deep? Some might. Therefore, we have instructions on how to do such. It's there to guide you. Underwater situations, there to guide you. You want to make age part of your character's adjustments? Well, we have something there to guide you. What about background professions? We have something there to guide you. But almost everything in the DMG is pretty much optional. Right? Those confusing unarmed combat rules, how many of us actually used it more than once? And then just said, all right, you know what? Uh... Daggers do D3, fists do D2. Maybe some dual damage, if you're going to use some dual rules. Right? Almost everything in the DMG is optional. If you had the combat charts, right? If you had the DM screen with the combat charts and the saving throws, how often did you open up the DMG during play? 
Not very often, if at all. The player's handbook you refer to, you needed those rules, right? You need the spell charts. Those weren't optional. That was defined. But the DMG isn't defined. And it took me how many years to figure this shit out? To some extent. Because I always saw that basic expert DD, or even back me, whatever, was the lesser system because it seemed to have more leeway built into it, even though they're calling it rules, right? They're saying these are rules. This is a these this is the dungeon master's rule book. But the reality is what got housework all the time. Basic. The reality is sort of AD and D. But A D and D, uh as legend and history says, A D and D was was introduced because there was too much house ruling going on with the original D&D and the basic expert rules, and they needed something that was going to be a unified set of rules for, for convention play. But really, if you're saying that the DMG is a guide and not a rule book, doesn't say the Dungeon Master's rule book, that would be interesting, right? Because that would mean that this stuff isn't optional. Everything in the DMG pretty much is optional, 95%. And I think that's pretty pretty interesting. They don't call it a rule book on the cover. But they call it that in the method of basic rules. Now, the first two editions of basic, it's, they were single booklets. Uh, Nessner broke it down to a player's book and a Dungeon Master's rule book. Right? Well, as a player's manual, not even a handbook, player's manual, and the Dungeon Master's rule book. Again, I find that distinction to be interesting. Now someone's going to go, hey, you splitting hairs. The Dungeon Master's Guide is, is full of rules. Sure it is. But for the most part, they're not needed. They're optional. How many times... Really, did you use the flight rules? I, I think I thought about using them once and then tried to figure it out and said, who gives a fuck, and I'm just going to wing it. Underwater. And some guidelines. But again, guidelines. I didn't really stress it. You winged it, and you've kind of avoided it, you know, unless they had helms of underwater action, which then kind of, you know, underwater just became any other place just three-dimensional in travel and movement. So, maybe you disagree with me. Maybe you feel that the DMG is full of rules and that those rules are sacrosanct. If that's the case, let me know. If you're listening on Anchor, you can leave a voicemail on Anchor. If you are not listening on Anchor, if you're watching this on YouTube, 347-509-5168 or you can email 10carstavern at gmail.com and give me a thought. Give me a feedback. I'll, listen, I, I've been called wrong before. Difference of opinion. That's fine. You know, we, we can't ask Gary his opinion on it and I'm sure his opinions on it changed as to what it was over the years. Um, but I'd like to, you know, See what your feelings are. Folks, we're in the midst of the world of pandemic. Take actions to keep yourself healthy. Use your common sense. You can't help others unless you yourself are healthy. Be safe. Be well. God bless. God bless you all. Roll your dice. Roll them well. And uh, knock on wood. I'll be back tomorrow with Bad Mike and Levi Combs. Yes. We have a guest on Talking Crit tomorrow night. That's 8 p.m. Eastern. We will be streaming live. You can watch on Facebook. You can watch on YouTube. I strongly suggest that you watch on YouTube. Facebook comments do not come through. So if you comment on Facebook, we don't get to see it until after the show. If you want us to respond, if you want to interact, and you're watching live, please, YouTube. Folks, if you are watching on YouTube, you like what you're, you're hearing, you're seeing, please subscribe, like the video. 
It helps the algorithm. It helps build this channel. It helps build this podcast. All right, folks. Enough of that. I will see you all tomorrow. Later, folks.